Health chief addresses vaccine concerns over pneumococcal infections. Chinese aircraft carrier on South China Sea mission amid regional tensions. And the opposition in Thailand calls for nationwide uprising. Good evening. Secretary for Food and Health Ko Wing Man said today it will take a few weeks for the government to come up with plans to distribute a vaccine against a potentially fatal strain of streptococcus. He stressed there is sufficient supply. This follows yesterday's announcement of a vaccination subsidy for children under five years old. Ronnie Samtani has more. After two local children recently died of streptococcus pneumonia infection, parents are scrambling to get their kids vaccinated. Secretary for Food and Health Ko Wing Man said 100,000 kids are eligible for the subsidized pneumococcal conjugate vaccine 13, or PVC 13. But it will be a few weeks before the government will announce how it plans to distribute the vaccine. It said it will consider prioritizing children with chronic diseases or low immunity. Ko also stressed that parents shouldn't worry about supply. He assured the public that pharmaceutical companies have sufficient supply of the PVC 13 vaccine. Lawmaker Kwok Ka Ki supports the scheme, but called on the government to speed up the process. Life is invaluable, especially to the parents who lost their children. So I agree that we will try every means to protect the children. We understand that it takes time for the arrangement and also for the vaccinated to come to Hong Kong. But we urge the government to negotiate with the pharmaceutical company, the supplier, to ask them to make this arrangement as an urgent agenda so that they will bring the vaccine as soon as possible. Authorities have decided to purchase the vaccine and then distribute to doctors. But the Medical Association has suggested speeding up the process by allowing physicians to directly order the vaccines from the pharmaceutical companies. Kwok also called on parents and schools to step up personal hygiene measures as part of efforts to fight the possible spread of the bug. Ronnie Samtani, TVB News. Just as the government is about to launch a public consultation on election reform, there are reports that a former top mainland official will head a new Hong Kong and Macau think tank. A legal scholar from Shenzhen says the group will emphasize the one country component of the one country, two systems principle. Diane To reports. Former deputy director of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office, Chen Zhuo, is the man tipped to head the new think tank. And former Central Policy Unit head Lao Siu Kai will be the deputy. Shenzhen University legal scholar Song Xiaozhuang, who is an expert of the basic law, confirmed with us today that he has been invited to join the group. Sung said the group may not be directly linked with Hong Kong's constitutional reform, but he said that would certainly be a key topic of research. He also pointed out that electoral reform is a tricky topic which Beijing must study in depth to see how it needs to handle issues relating to a chief executive elected by universal suffrage. According to Song, the group will have 150 scholars, most of them from the mainland. He said apart from studying Hong Kong's political system, the group is also expected to explore topics such as mainland mothers giving birth here and growing local activism. Sung disagreed with suggestions that the formation of this think tank will infringe on the one country, two systems policy. He said, in fact, it will be a correction of it because Hong Kong may have been putting too much emphasis on two systems rather than one country. Um, um, Executive Councillor Regina Ip doesn't believe the think tank would be setting the parameters for political reform. This evening, the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office confirmed reports the think tank is being set up. Diane to, TVB News. Lung Cheng Ying's popular support has dropped to a new low since he took office. That's according to the latest University of Hong Kong poll. In a telephone survey of about 1,000 people, the chief executive received a grade of 40 marks, a drop of 1.2 points from the last poll. But the number of those who oppose Lung as Hong Kong's leader has also dropped by about two percentage points. That means his net approval rate has, in fact, edged up slightly to minus 39 percent. 
Three days after China imposed a new maritime air defense zone over the East China Sea, international airlines say they've begun notifying China of flights entering the disputed region. The move by Beijing has sparked angry diplomatic exchanges between China and its neighbors. James Aiken has more on the ongoing territorial dispute that's taking on new dimensions. It's business as usual for airlines operating routes over the East China Sea, except that international carriers like Singapore Airlines, Korean Air and Qantas are now delivering flight plans to Chinese authorities. But the new rules for China's maritime air defense zone have sparked fury and defiance from Japan. Japanese Defense Minister Itsunori Onodera today said China's move will not affect Japanese patrols in the zone. And he vowed that Tokyo will severely deal with any air intrusion under Japan's self-defense law. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has slammed China for attempting to impose measures that he said have no validity. Abe called the move a very dangerous thing. There is also dismay and concern in Washington. The White House is calling the move unnecessarily inflammatory. The Obama administration wants the regional dispute resolved diplomatically and advised avoiding escalating rhetoric or policy pronouncements. Both China and Japan have summoned each other's ambassadors to lodge formal protests, and Australia has summoned China's ambassador for an explanation. The mood in Seoul is equally tense. Like Japan, South Korea also has claims in the disputed region. Today, that country's defense ministry repeated that China's unilateral action will not be accepted. Amid the flaring tensions, China has begun military air patrols over the territory. And today, China's only aircraft carrier, the Liaoning, was dispatched to the South China Sea. From its port in Qingdao, the boat will have to sail through the East China Sea. It's being accompanied by two missile destroyers and two frigates for what the PLA Navy says is military training drills and scientific research. James Aiken, TVB News. Next, a giant leap for the country's space program. China's lunar probe, Chang'e 3, is scheduled to take off early next month. If everything goes smoothly, officials with China's space program say the probe will touch down on the surface of the moon in mid-December. It will be the first time that China has actually landed a spacecraft on the moon. Chang'e 3 is a key phase in China's lunar program, which includes orbiting, landing, and returning to Earth. Chang'e 3 will carry a lunar rover named U-2, or Jade Rabbit, to investigate the moon's surface. Scientists say they will also test deep space communication technologies. China is considering sending a person to the moon sometime after 2020. The opposition in Thailand has now called for a nationwide uprising. Nearly 3,000 anti-government protesters massed in front of the Interior Ministry today to pressure their prime minister to step down. This after Yinglet Shinawat launched an emergency security law last night, hoping to stop the protesters from paralyzing her government. <laughs> Waving Thai flags, thousands of demonstrators surrounded the interior, agriculture, tourism and transport ministries ordering workers inside to leave. They did the same thing yesterday at the finance ministry where they stormed its gates and camped out overnight. Their demands are simple. They want Yinglet Shinawat ousted. They believe she's allowing her brother, Taksin, to control the government. The former prime minister was ousted in a military coup in 2006. Since Sunday, more than 150,000 demonstrators have united against the tax and regime, and government security is taking no chances. They've locked themselves behind the heavily barricaded government house with employees still inside. But they have evacuated staff from ministries under siege hoping to stop protesters from disrupting the country's stability, Yinglut invoked an emergency security law in large parts of Bangkok and surrounding areas. While she has vowed not to use violence to stop the protests, she has expanded special security laws to cover the entire capital. 
And today, a bomb squad removed a grenade from the opposition Democrat Party branch office in Bangkok. The turmoil is driving foreign investors out of the Thai financial markets and is making the bot the second worst performing Asian currency. The Democrat Party, which is spearheading the protests, launched a no-confidence debate in Parliament against Yinglet today. But that boat has no chance of unseating Yinglet because her poi Thai party controls the House of Representatives. And still to come in the broadcast tonight, turmoil in Ukraine as jailed former prime minister goes on a hunger strike. The U.S. and Afghanistan at odds over American troop presence. And Pelé goes to Hollywood.